Hello, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So, I'm Lawrence, a street and urban cityscape photographer based here in Singapore. So, for today's video, we are talking about ND filters. So, for those who are watching this and have no idea what an ND filter is or need some help figuring out which kind of ND filters to buy, then hopefully this video might be for you. Let's go. So, uh, ND filter stands for natural density filter. It's basically a piece of darkened glass that you mount on the front of your camera lens, allowing you to take photos at a slower shutter speed without overexposing your photos. So in other words, ND filters kind of act like sunglasses for your camera lens. So ND filters comes in three different types. We have square NDs, circulars, and variable NDs. So square ND filters usually comes in a kit where it includes a circular polarizer and actual ND filters which looks like these large pieces of glass. And yes, you might think that these are more rectangular than square and I totally agree with you. But this kind of ND filters typically comes in square shapes but the brand I'm using called Case Filter comes in rectangular shapes. And the clever thing with Case Filters is that they use a bigger track size circular NDs on the holder so it sort of seals the edge of the lens. So in this way, unwanted light leaks doesn't get into your lens, potentially affecting your images. So of course, for the rest of this video, I will still be referring to this kit as a square filter. So one disclaimer is that Case Filters was kind enough to send me this for testing and review and I get to keep this ND filter kit for my own use. So for circular ND filters, it's like a regular UV filter where you can just screw it on the front of the lens. And it comes in different strengths like 3, 6 or 9 slots where you can just screw on and stack until you have your desired exposure. So one thing to note is that another kind of ND filters for squares and circular is GND, which stands for graduated ND filter. So GND filters is useful in situations where you have an even break in the horizon between the sky that's brighter than the lower half of the frame. So when you mount the GND filter on the front of your lens, it kind of balances out the exposure nicely. So next is VNDs or variable NDs. It's almost similar to circular NDs, except that you don't have to stack different strengths of ND filter to get to the amount of stops that you need. You can just continue to turn the variable ND until you get to the number of stops that you need for your exposure. So one thing to mention is that certain variable NDs will get their X vignetting as you turn to the highest stop available. So in this case, I'm using the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon variable ND, so I'm happy to report that no such vignetting exists on this brand of VNDs. However, I did notice that this filter does produce some rainbow color fringing when I was attempting to take a long exposure on the train. So I'm not sure if the color casting was caused by the variable ND with a UV filter already attached to my lens or shooting through a window produces such an effect. But I thought to mention it in case anyone is considering getting this variable ND. So one thing to mention is that I currently don't own any circular NDs. So this video's comparison will be between the variable ND as well as the square ND filters. So as mentioned earlier, the only difference between a circular and a variable ND is that for circular filters, you have to stack multiple of these circular filters with different strengths if needed. And for variable NDs, you just have to turn the filter to adjust the strength of the ND. So the main difference between a variable ND and a square filter is its size, which is mostly contributed by the glass of the square filters and the holder. So for square filters, as I mentioned earlier, I'm using the Case Armor Filter Kit system. Meaning in order to use this filter kit, there is a bunch of stuff you have to attach to the front of your lens. So first things first, in order to use this filter, you have to find your composition, set up your tripod, exposure, so on and so forth. Then screw on the correct adapter ring to your lens. In this case, I'm using the 82mm filter thread size. Then attach the circular polarizer, turn the dial until you get the effect that you want. So in most cases, this is to cut out the reflection on the water surface. Lastly, is to attach the actual ND. And because square filters come in large pieces of glass which cover the front element evenly, vignetting is almost non-existent when using square filters. On the other hand, vignetting is just the unfortunate trade-off when you're using circular filters. So it's going to be a lot more obvious if you're pairing it with a wide-angle lens. So let's say if you're doing a lot of landscape photography with long exposures and you want absolute control over your in-camera exposures, then the square filter system is probably going to be better for you. And personally for me, if I were to use a GND, I would prefer to use it on a square filter system 
as it's easier for me to mount it on and then align it with the sky as compared to screwing on a circular GND and making it more cumbersome to try to get it straight with the horizon line. But of course, let's say you've got other stuff that you need to carry in your bag or let's say if you're constantly on the move and prefer the convenience of just screwing on filters, then I think you're probably better off with the circular or the variable ND filter instead. And another thing worth mentioning is that let's say if you intend to use the VND in wet weather conditions, there's going to be a chance that the water might seep into the variable ND because there are actually two pieces of glass that's rotating inside the ring. And that actually happened to me once and I have to remove the glass by prying it, the glass open to wipe dry both pieces of the glass inside here. But thankfully the VND is still working perfectly fine. So that's all I have for today. I hope you guys found this video useful and hopefully gives you a better understanding of the different type of ND filters that's available out there. So as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until the next video, get out there and make the best of every opportunity you are given. Peace.